on this computer. Okay, section four. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, the monthly membership fee for an online TV and movie service is nine eighty. The cost of viewing TV shows online is included in the membership fee, but there's an additional fee of one fifty to rent each movie online. For one month, Jill's membership and movie rental fees was twelve eighty. How many movies did Jill rent online last month? Okay, membership monthly. Okay, monthly membership fee for online TV and movie services nine eighty. Cost of viewing TV shows online is included. Additional fee of one fifty to rent each movie online. Okay, so what was her total bill? So twelve eighty. So how did we go from twelve uh from nine eighty to twelve eighty? We added how much? One point five x. Yes, one point five x. And what's that difference? That difference is what three dollars. Twelve eighty minus nine eighty is three dollars. So x has to be two there, right? Yeah. Two. Okay. That's one. Two, one of the requirements to for becoming a court reporter is the ability to type 225 words per minute. Donald can currently type 180 words per minute and believes that with practice, he can increase his speeding, his typing speed by five words per minute each month. Which of the following represents the number of words per minute that Donald believes he will be able to type M months from now? To the following represents the number of words per minute that Donald believes he, he will be able to type in months from now. Would it be C? Yes. 180 is what he's currently doing times five times the number of months. Words per minute, Donald believes he will be able to, yes. All right, that one's good. Three. Uh, if a three round pizza is sliced, if a three pound pizza is sliced in half, and each of it and each half is sliced into thirds, what is the weight in ounces of each of the slices? One pound is sixteen ounces. Okay, three pound, three pound, sliced in half, is sliced in half, each half is sliced into thirds. What is the weight in ounces? Okay, so you start with your three pounds, divide that by two. That's and one and a half. Yep, that's one and a half. And then you take that, and each, each half is sliced into thirds. And then right. one in ounces? Yeah, they want to answer in ounces. What is the weight in ounces of each of the slices? Okay, so if it's three pounds, that's really 48 ounces. Divide that by two, that's what, 24 ounces? And then you're dividing that by three. three. So we're looking at eight. What is the weight in ounces of each of the slices? Eight. You have your SAT test this week? Yeah, I have it on Wednesday. On Wednesday? Okay. All right. Nick surveyed a random sample of freshmen of the freshman class of his high school to determine whether the fall festival should be held in October or November. Of the 90 students surveyed, 25.6% preferred October. Based on this information, about how many students in the entire 225 person class would expect to prefer having the fall festival in October? So just take your 225. Oh, no. Take your 90. Well, festival should be held in October. Of the 90 students surveyed, so 90 out of the 225 prefer October. Based on this information about how many students in the entire 225 person class would expect, would be expected to prefer okay, October. All right, so how do we do this one? Oh, 
Okay, so if they sampled 90... Can you set up a proportion? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what should we write? Um, Twenty-five point six over ninety equals x over two twenty-five. Uh, say it again. Twenty-five point six over ninety, and then x over two twenty-five. Now, the way we set this up, what we will solve for x here would be a percentage, right? Is how about how many? So we want we don't want a percentage. We want a number. So what we could do is take that um, two twenty, just take the two twenty five and multiply by the point two five six. What is that? That's about um, it's about one quarter. What's about one quarter of two two five? About sixty. What is it? What does this work out to be? Fifty-seven point six. So that one's about sixty, right? For for B. All right, let's check. check let's check that one. Uh, for B, we said. Yeah. Uh, which one's the answers? This one. For section four, question four. What should we say, B? Oh yeah, right, yeah, there's a, about 60 right there, yeah, okay, good. All right, uh, all right, that's four, five. The density of an object is equal to the mass of the object divided by the volume. What is the, vo what is the volume in milliliters of an object with a mass of 24 grams with a density of three grams per milliliter? All right, so just set up a little formula, density of object is equal, so density equals mass of an object, mass divided by volume. What is the volume? What is the volume in milliliters of an object with a mass of 24 grams? The mass is 24 grams. X is what we're trying to find. And density of three grams three grams per, per milliliters, milliliter. So what's X there? Um, eight? Yes, eight milliliters. Yep, eight milliliters. The density, yes. So if this was eight milliliters, that would reduce to three over one. Three grams per every one milliliter. Yep. All right, that was five, six. Last week, Raul worked 11 more hours than An Angelica. If they worked a, com a combined total of 59, how many hours did Angelica work last week? So we're going to say let X equal what? Angelica. Angelica's hours, yep. Angelica's Angelica's hours. So what's the algebra? X um, plus X plus 11 equals yep. 59. Yep. And so what is that? Uh, 2X equals 49, 48? No. Yeah, 2x plus 11 would equal 59. And then take your 11, subtract 11 on both sides. So x equals 24. That's Angelico's hours though, right? So what are we asking? How many hours did Angelico work last week? Yeah, 24. And the other, uh, Raul worked how many? 35. So there's your 59 right there. Okay. But they're asking how many hours Angelico worked last week, which is 24. Okay, seven. All right, so they gave us the chart. 
The table above represents the 50 movies that had the greatest ticket sales in 2012, categorized by Movie Type and Motion Picture Association of America. Rating. What proportion of movies are comedies with a PG-13 rating? All right, how do we do that one? What proportion of movies are comedies? So there's your comedies with a PG-13 rating. And here's your PG-13s. So that's four comedy movies with PG-13. Say it again. That's four comedies that are PG-13. Yes. What proportion of movies are comedies with a PG-13 rating? So four out of what? 31? Would it be 31? 9 plus 22? Let's see the answers. Okay, four out of 31 is not even a choice. All right, uh, let's minus this go like that. Can it be four out of 50? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the total is 50. Yep. Total, the table over, above represents the 50 movies that have greatest ticket. Okay. What proportion? Yeah, so two out of, or four out of 50 is the same as two out of 25. So A. A, okay. Yep. All right, that's seven, eight. Line L in the XY plane consists of, con contains points from each of quadrants two, three, and four, but no points from quadrant one. Which of the following must be true? Okay, so there's your four quadrants. One, two, three, four. Line L in the XY plane contains points from two, three, and four, but none from one. Which of the following must be true? Slope, the slope of L is undefined. The slope of L is zero, slope of L is positive, slope of L is negative. I think it's D, the slope is negative. Slope is negative. Because that way the line would have points in two, three, and four. So where would it happen in quadrant three? My, my drawing was a little bit off, right? So if there's your four quadrants, um, it's got to have points there, there, and there. Uh, I would draw the line like this, and then the point would be here, yeah, and then like here, and then here. yeah, that's something. Yep, let's check that one for 8D. Let's check 8D, 8D, yep, 8D, yep, right there. All right. All right, that's eight, nine. Give us the graph. The table above shows the number of registered voters in 2012 in thousands in four geographic regions and five age groups. Based on the table, if a registered voter who was 18 to 44 years old in 2012 is chosen at random, which of the following is closest probability that the registered voter was from the Midwest region? So 18 to 24 is this right here. Midwest is right here. Oh, I think it's 18 to 44. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, my bad, my bad, yep. Oops. So it's basically that one and that one. Midwest is just that one. Based on table, if a registered voter who was 18 to 44 years old in 2012 is chosen at random, which of the following is the closest probability that the registered voter was from Midwest? So we would just put the two numbers, add them together, and put that over their two totals. Those ones? 
Yeah. And then we take this over the sum of these two. Well, that one and the one in the 44, 26, 44. Oh yeah, this one, right? So you add these two and divide by these two? Yeah, I think so. 34, 53 plus, what is that, 11,000? 11, 11,000, mm -hmm. two, three, seven over 14, seven, six, six plus 47, not eight, nine, six. What does that work out to be? I got 0 0.29. 0.29, Okay, so that's about 0.25. Which of the following is the closest to the probability that register voter was from Midwest? 0.29. All right, let's check that one. That's nine. Wait, I think I added wrong. This is what? About 14,000. It's about what? 14,600 roughly over... 62,000, about 62,000. Yeah, this time when I did it, I got 0 0.23. 0 0.23, okay, so that's B. All right, let's check the answer on that one. That's 9B. 9B is correct, yep. Yeah, there's your 14,000, there's your 62,000. Yep, 0.23, yep. All right. Okay, a curator at a wildlife society created the scatter plot above to examine the relationship between gestation period and life expectancy of 10 species of animals. What is the life expectancy in years of an animal that has the longest uh, gestation period? Okay, so gestation period is 60. That one's the longest period in days. What's this value? Three? Yeah. So three on that one. What's going on with this thing? Uh, 11. Let's, um, I'm, having some t I'm having some, okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Of the label points, which represents an animal for which the ratio of life expectancy to gestation period is greatest? Of the label points, which represents the animal for, for which the ratio of life expectancy, so life expectancy over gestation period is the biggest. Okay, so A, where's A? A is here, right here, right? Here's, what's this X mm -hmm. value? A is about 22, comma, 7. Mm -hmm. B is what? B is 44, 8. We're just going to divide them after, see which one's the biggest number. Okay. C is 51, 8, about 51, 8. D is... 51, 10, 51, 10. All right, so let's see here. Uh, life expectancy is... Would it be C? 51 over eight is about what? 6.3 out of eight is what? Three out of eight is 375? 6.375. This one would be 5.1, it's not that one. This one would be 5 point, not that one. And this one would be three something. Yeah, so C makes sense. Yep. Okay. All right, 12. In the XY plane, the graph of the function of F has X intercepts at negative three, negative one and one, which of the following could define F? Just take the opposite of each of those signs. Three, uh, one, negative. 
x minus one and x plus one. Uh, so you're saying which one? Uh, you're saying C. C? Yes. Yep. That one's good. 13. Population of mosquitoes in a swamp is estimated over the course of 20 weeks, as shown. Which of the following best describes the relationship between time and the estimated population of mosquitoes during the 20 weeks? Increasing linear. Okay, it's definitely not decreasing. Not that one. Increasing linear, exponential growth. Okay, it's not decaying. It's not getting smaller. So which out of out of A and C, which one? Exponential growth. Yeah, C. Yep, yeah. it's it's growing up. It's growing real fast. Exponential. Okay, fourteen. They give you the equation. Excuse me. They give you the equation. And what do they want us to do? They want us to, the expression above gives the amount of money in dollars generated in a year by a thousand dollar deposit in a bank account that pays an annual interest rate of R percent compounded monthly. Which of the following expressions show how much additional money is generated at an interest rate of 5% than a, at an interest rate of 3%? Which of the following express shows how much additional money? Think of D. There's your 5%. There's your 3%. It wouldn't be, would be division. What about A? Let's see A. A would be the amount at 2%, right? Which of the following express, expressions show how much additional money is generated at an interest rate of 5 than at 3? Oh, uh, okay. So D makes more sense. Yeah, let's check that one. 14D. 14D, yep. All right. All right, 15. Come on. Okay, which of the following scatter plots shows a relationship that is approximately modeled by the equation that where A is positive and B is negative? So if A is positive and B is negative, Y equals A is positive, B is negative. So if B is negative, so for example, if A is say two and X is negative one, what does that look like? That's the same thing as 2 over x. I'm thinking b. If b is negative, Oh no, uh, A A looks like it's going down to the right to and B. Which of the following scatter plots shows a relationship that is approximately modeled by the equation that where A is positive and B is negative. So if if B is negative, what's happening to this overall? function if b is negative is it decreasing that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking this will be 
a over x when x when b is negative one that's when b is negative one if b is negative two this equals to y equals a over x squared so that means it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller the output is getting smaller and smaller and smaller which means a seems like the right answer then Now look, if a if b is negative ten, the output's going to be y equals a x ten, right? This is way smaller than this first one, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm thinking it's a because the tenth dot would be way smaller, or the tenth dot here would be down to the right way more than the first dot. First or second dot. I'm thinking A. Let's check that one. All right, that was what? 15? 15A? Oh, 15B. Of the scatter plot shown, only the only one in in choice B would a, would be approximately modeled by the suction function. Choice A is incorrect as this scatter plot is approximately modeled by a linear function. Okay, okay, that's why. Okay, so they're saying that it's exponential decay. So it's it's not linear decay. A would be linear decay. B would be exponential decay. So it should be exponential decay because B is negative. That means that as B gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this this dot gets closer to the x-axis. Okay. So it, that one would be B. 15B, 16. They give us the chart there. Total cost Y for buying the materials and renting the tools in terms of the number of days is given by this. You've got M there. You've got W there. Got K there. Yeah. Let me click out of this. Okay. You've got M there. You've got W there and K there. For what number of days, X, will the total cost of buying the materials and renting the tools from store B be less than or equal to the total cost from buying the materials and renting the tools from store A? Okay, so we got Y equals M plus W plus K times X. What number of days will the co total cost of buying the materials and renting the tools from B be less than A? Okay, so how do we do this one? Less than or equal to six, greater than or equal to six, less than or equal to 7.3, greater than or equal to 7.3. So let's plug it in. Let's plug it, plug six in there and 7.3 in there. Okay. Uh, total cost. So what would this, if this was six right here, what are these numbers? Or what are what's M, W, and K? For store B or for store A? Uh, for three different stores. Uh, let's try there's store A, store B, store C. Which one do you want first? Uh, let's try B first. This one first. So store B, M would be 600. W would be 25. 25 and 80. What does this work out to be? This is what, 105? 105 times six is what? 
630? 630. 630 plus 600 is how much? 1230? 1230. Okay, so that's for B. That's Y of B. Now, what's Y of A? This one. Uh, 750 plus... 15 plus 65 is 80, right? 80 times 6. What does that one work out to be? What's 480 plus 750? 1230. 1230. That's also 1230. So this one says less than or equal to 6. And that one's greater than or equal to 6. Well, it wouldn't be either of those because store B isn't less than the cost. Okay, so let's try the same. Th let's do the same thing for 7.3. Okay. All right, so if this is 7.3, oops. This is what, 80? Yes. So if this is 7.3 here, what does that work out to be? 105 times 7.3 is what? 787.5. The whole thing? Not the whole thing. Just oh, not yeah. Okay, now add the 600. That's 1,387.5. 1,387.5? Yes. All right, now that's B. Now Y of A would be what? Y of A would be... 750 plus 70 times 7.3. What is that? Twelve sixty one. Twelve sixty one. Yeah. Okay, so that's when it's seven point three. Now, so at at. At 7.3, at x equals 7.3, what happens? We know that y a is less than y b, right? At, at x equals 7.3, y b is bigger, right? 1,300 is bigger than 1,200. Yeah. So would it be, which one of those would it be? For what number of days will the total cost of buying the materials and renting tools from store B be less than A? Less than or equal, less than or, or equal. Would it be A? Wouldn't it be this one? At X equals six, they're both equal to each other, right? Yeah. Uh, for what number of days will the total cost of buying the materials and renting the tools from B be less than or equal, less than or equal? to the total cost of buying materials and renting tools from store A. All right, let's check that one, 16, 16A, 16A. Uh, total cost is done for buying, found by substituting the respective values for these stores. Okay, we, that's what we did. And then what else do we do? All right, so they take these two equations right here, and what do they do? They take those two and... They set them less than or equal to each other. And then solve for x. Okay, which yields x less than or equal to 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so it was A on that one. All right, uh, 17. 
If the relationship between the total cost Y of building the materials and renting the tools from store C and the number of days X for which the tools are rented is graphed in the XY plane, what does the slope of the line represent? So if they graph that, relationship between the total cost buying materials or anything at store C and the number of days for which is graphed. Okay, so if you set up a graph, X would be the, this Y axis would be total cost in Y. at store C, total cost at store C, total cost at store C is the y-axis, and number of days, x-axis, x in days. So the slope would be? Total cost of the project, total cost of materials, total- The daily, daily cost of the project? Project, yeah, that seems a lot. Total daily rental cost of the tools, no. It would be materials. It wouldn't just be one or the other. It would be the whole thing. I think that one's C. 17C. Oh, D. What was D? Total daily rentals. Oh, okay, my bad. Total daily rental costs of the tools. Oh, maybe because it wouldn't include the starting point. Uh, let's see. What's y-axis? Y-axis between total cost y of building the materials and renting the tools at store C. Total cost y of buying materials and renting the tools at store C. And the number of days x for which the tools are rented. Oh, this is days tools are rented. Tools are rented. The days of the tools are rented. Okay. Total daily rental cost of the tools. Slope is just a uh, change in Y over change in X. Total cost over days the tools are rented over this. So then basically the total, now the, the y-axis or this, the y value would already contains tools. This is total cost. So that already includes the tools. So the tools would cancel out on both. So what's left over is the total daily rental cost of the tools. Is that right? Uh... Total daily rental cost of the tools. Total cost over the total days the tools are rented. Total daily rental cost. Let's check that one. 13, no, 17. The total cost of Y buying materials are rented by this. If the relationship is graphed in the XY plane, the slope of the graph is equal to that W plus K, which is the total daily rental cost of the wheelbarrow plus the daily rental cost of the concrete mixer. That is total daily rental cost of the tools. Oh, okay. Actually, this is the same form as Y equals MX plus B. So there's your, if you rewrite this, this is your M basically. That's your M right there, right? M times X, and this is your B. So they're asking basically what's does this, this represent W plus K. All right, let's go on. Let's move on. What's uh what's next? 18. 18 is now Jim has identical drinking glasses each. Each in shape in the shape of a right, right circular cylinder, with a terminal diameter of three inches. He pours milk from a gallon jug into each glass until it's full. 
If the height of the milk in each glass is about six inches, what is the largest number of full milk glasses that he can pour from one gallon of milk? There are 20, 231 cubic inches in a gallon. Shape of a right circular cylinder, right circular cylinder. Something like that. Is that a right circular cylinder? I think there's diagrams at the front. Oh, yeah, 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 there is. So we're looking for a shape of a right circular cylinder. Or which one? This one? No, right be? circular cylinder is this one, right? Yeah, that one. That one, okay. Volume equals pi r squared h. All right, so let's draw that. Here's your cylinder. Something like that. It was a, okay, shape of a with internal diameter of three. So there's your diameter of three. He pours milk from a gallon jug into each of the glasses until it's full. The height of the milk in each glass is about six inches. So there's your six, three inches and six inches. What is the largest number of full milk glasses that he can pour from one gallon of milk? Two hundred and. 31 cubic inches in one gallon. One gallon equals 231 cubic inches, so inches cubed. Okay, so now we know the volume is, what was the volume again? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Pi. Like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if we, if one gallon is 231 inches cubed, we know the, this is the diameter, right? And this is the height. So what's the radius? Radius would be mm -hmm. 0.5 inches. Yeah. Height would be six. So can we plug that in? And so what, what are we going to substitute right here? I thought that was what we were looking for. Um, okay, yes. So pi times 1.5 squared times 6 is what? What is that? That's 42.41150. About 42.41, right? Yeah. How many 42.41s go into 231? Um, 5.4. 5.4, right? So we take we choose five because if it's 5.4, you can't have 0.4 of a glass, right? What's what is the question here? If the milk da, 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 what is the largest number of full milk glasses? Largest number of full milk glasses. So you'd round down. Okay. That he can pour from one. Yeah, let's check 18C. Yeah, 18C. So there's yeah, there's your 231 divided by your 42 one, which is about five. Yeah, rounded down is five. Yep. Okay. Eraser. Okay, 18, 19, if this, what's the least possible value of 3p plus 2? 3p minus 1, minus 2, greater than or equal to 1. So just flip the sign. No, you can't flip the signs. All right, so what's this for p? Uh, 3p, yeah, 3, so p greater than or equal to 1. 
Oh, I forgot the three. Uh, now what? Now, if p is greater than or equal to one, three p plus two is what does it say? What's the least possible? So the least would be one here. That would be five. If p is greater than or equal to one, the smallest it could be is one. Yeah. So three times one plus two, five. Nineteen twenty. The mass of living organisms in a lake is defined to be the biomass of the lake. If the biomass in a lake doubles each year, which of the following graphs could model the biomass in the lake as a function of time? Note in each graph below zero or no O represents zero zero. Okay. So if it's doubling every year. Which one? C? Yeah. Or would it be A? Um, so let's see here. This one's a linear, right? This one's linear, and this and C is uh, exponential, right? All right, so let's see here. A living, the mass of a living organism, is, lake is defined. Okay, if the biomass in a lake doubles each year, the biomass is doubling. So this is zero, zero. This is one, one. This is two, two, three, three, four, four. That's linear. But the, the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The formula that we're looking for is something like this. It's doubling each year. So first year, it's two. Second year, it's four. Third year, it's eight. So on, right? That's exponential, right? Uh, something in C. So what's the first one? It When X is Y equals two to the X. When X is zero, this one's what? One. When X is one, Y is two. When x is 2, y is 4, right? So does that look like, as you go, as you continue here, and as you continue here, that would be most likely this one, right? Yeah. 0, 1, 0, 1, I would think 0, 1 would be there, right? Uh, two, 1, 2, 1, 2 would be here. Which of the following graphs could model the biomass in the lake as a function of time? What about this one? No, it's not D. Doesn't look like it's B. I'm thinking C because it's exponential, not linear. Let's check 20. 20. 20 C. Which one did which one do we say C? Yeah, exponential, yeah. 20 C. Yeah, right here. Increases exponentially over time. So anytime you have an exponential graph, it'll increase very quickly. Uh, All right, that's 20, 21. In the scatter plot of this data, where renewable energy consumption in the year 2000 is plotted along the X and renewable energy consumption in the year 2010 is plotted along the Y, for each of the given energy sources, how many data points would, would be above the line that? What does this line look like, Y equals X? Y equals X is just a straight diagonal line. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. It looks like this one actually, looks like that one. Okay, so scatter plot where rene renewable energy consumption in the year 2000, 2000 is the darker one, 2010 is the lighter one. 
how many data points would be above the line, above this diagonal line? Okay. Um. Plotted along the X and renewable energy consumption in the year 2010 is plotted along the Y. So if we have, which one's Y, which one's X? 2000, so this will be 2000, this will be 2010. How many data points would be above the diagonal line? Consumption. And resource. This point, no. Um. Not sure how to do this one. I'm not sure either. Yeah, not sure how to do this. One, two, three, or four. Uh let's check that one. Twenty one. C. The exact coordinates of the scatter plot in the XY cannot be read from the bar graph provided. Okay. However, for a data point to be above the, the diagonal line, the value of Y must be greater than the value of X, okay? That is, the consumption in 2010 must be greater than the consumption in 2000. This occurs for three types of energy sources shown in the bar graph. Biofuels, geothermal, and wind. Biofuels, geothermal, and wind. So they're saying the gray is bigger than the black. What else are they saying? Choices A, B, and D are incorrect and may be the result of a conceptual error in presenting the data shown in the scatter plot. Scatter, scatter plot. For example, in choice B is incorrect because there are two data points in the scatter plot that lie below the diagonal. Okay. okay. So what they're saying is in this one, oops, what they're saying is in this one, this one, and this one, the gray is bigger. So Y equals X in that one. Y is greater than X in those three. The gray is bigger than the black. So those are your three. Okay. That makes sense. All right, one, what was that, 21, 22. Of the following, which best approximates the percent decrease in consumption of wood power in the US from 2000 to 2010? Wood power, Decrease from 2000 to 2010, wood power. Okay, so th this one right here. All right, so, so what, are the, what are the coordinates there? 2.25 and then two. Uh, oh, sorry, I was looking at wind, my, my bad. Wood, wood, they said wood. All right, this one is how much? 2.25. Yep, 2.25. And how much is this one? Two, two. right? All right, what's the percentage decrease from 2.25 to two? How do we calculate percentage decrease? We take the difference, 2.25 
minus 2 over what number? The 2.25 or the 2? 2? Um, 2.25? 2.25, yep. What is this? Okay. Uh, this would be 0.25 over 2.25, which is what? Mm. 1 over what, 9? Yeah. And what's 1 over 9 as a percentage, roughly? 11? Yes, yeah, about 11. Let's check that one. 22B. Yeah, 22B, yep. Yeah, there's your 11%. Yep. All right, cool. All right, 23. The tables below give the distribution of a high of high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for city A and city B over the same 21 days in March. Which of the following is true about the data shown for these 21 days? Three days over 80, 14 days over 79, so forth. Six days over, okay. The standard deviation of temperatures in CDA is larger, B is larger. Standard deviation of temperatures in CDA is the same as B. Standard deviation of temperatures in these cities cannot be calculated. All right, so there's our 21 days. This adds up to 21. This should add up to 21. 17 and 4 is 21. 9 and 11. 11 and 10 is 21. Okay, so how do we find standard deviation again? How many I days? I think it's just the difference from the mean. Yes, exactly. So we have five days. One, two, three, four, five. So how do we calculate standard deviation? How do we calculate the mean temperature? You just add the frequency and divide by the five days. So for example, this one, three, right? We go, what, three times 80 plus 14 times 79. Mm -hmm. These two numbers times each other, add them up all, to, all together, and then what? Divide by five, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, let's do that. Three times 80 plus 14 times 79 plus two times 78 plus 77 plus 76 over five is what? That's for A. For B, six times 80 plus three, by 79 plus 2 by 78 plus 4 by 77 plus 6 by 76. How much? This is what, 240? Two 240 plus 14 times 79? Yeah. 1346 plus 78 times 2 is 1, what, 56? 156. Plus 77 plus 76, how much is that? Divided by five is how much? I got 31. 240 plus 1346 plus 156 plus 77 plus 76 divided by five. 379, you said? Oh, wait, wait a second. Did I do something wrong? I got 331. 331? Yeah. Two 
240 plus 1346 plus 156 plus 77 plus 76. 1895 divided by 5. 379. 379 or 331? I think you're right. 79 times 14 is how much? Oh, no, this number is wrong. That's why. This number right here is wrong. 17 times, or not 70, 14 times 79. 14 times 79. 1, 1. This number should be 1, 106. But anyways, you do the same thing for A and B. Um, and then... I think the answer would be A. The standard deviation of temperatures in city eight is larger. Let's check that one. What number was that? Oh, it says B. All right, let's see what it says there. Uh, standard deviation measure, okay. Alternate one can calculate the mean and visually inspect the difference between data values. A, the mean is 78. So how did they get the 1655? Five, five. They added up. They added up the temperatures, right? Okay, so we we did it, we calculated that wrong. So 788 versus 78. So if the if A is 78.8, then you would subtract each of the, each of these numbers. And okay. then you square them, I believe. One can calculate the mean and visually inspect the difference between, okay, for A, the mean is that, for B, the mean is that. The data for city A are closely clustered near 79, which indicates a small standard deviation. The data for city B are spread out away from 78, which indicates a larger larger standard. So B was larger standard deviation for B. Okay. Okay, so that's B. So 23B. All right, just keep studying a few uh, questions every day. Um, you got your test on um, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Just take your time. Uh, don't spend any. Don't spend too long on any one question. If you can figure it out, just best guess and move on. Okay. Um, if you need me for like just the general tutoring, tutoring for the um, for your homework or your quizzes and all that, just let me know. Okay.